that we have this recording for all of us afterward. Um, now, of course, you guys do get the uh, recordings, or you should be getting those Zoom emails the day afterwards. And of course, as always, uh, it is on YouTube uh, the day following. We take I usually take one of the sessions. Uh, the afternoon session is always, uh, almost always, I should say, live and streaming on our, our Facebook group for agent locator clients. So if you ever wanted to jump in and watch the earlier session, if it's not the YouTube chosen recording, uh, you do have that ability to do so in there. Um, so today we are focusing uh, on the websites once again. Uh, so last session we, we we talked about you know your website and adding some content in there um, and helping to boost your SEO. Now you guys do have you know your little actions. You can definitely raise your hands. And so just out of curiosity, after last week's session, uh, did any of you guys navigate to your website? Uh, so going and taking a look at the back end, whether you added anything in there or not, but just kind of took the, the initiative to, to jump in, take a poke, take a poke around. Uh, did anyone on here actually you know, do any of that things or you just take it all in and, uh, and uh, just kind of watching and learning? Uh, did anyone take our adventure, raise a hand, anyone do a rent, like adventure to your website? Perfect. So Susan, it sees that Susan's done that. Awesome. Perfecto. Uh, so Rob is just still playing catch up. He hasn't done that yet. Not a problem. Not a problem. So I uh, do take it upon yourself 100%. We do cover a lot of content. And so the whole theory was, you know, we do these once a week, giving you guys, hopefully, because we know there's a lot of stuff on your plate in the day to day world of real estate, uh, but giving yourself, you know, enough time to kind of like take, take time to action some of the things that you're learning. Um, these, these are all recorded, as I said, so you could always go back and watch them again and kind of learn at your, your own pace and, and what have you. Um, so today we are extending the whole website. Um, so today we are focusing on long tail keyword searches. Um, so when you look at uh, home searches online, we have the standard people that are just searching for a house or a condo in a specific city. So like houses for sale in Toronto, for example, that's just a standard search set. Many people perform. Um, the long tail is when we are buyers out there now, they're getting to be a little bit more specific as to what they may be looking for when they are searching for real estate. Um, so they, they add in things like, you know, two bedroom houses for sale or two bedroom condos for sale or homes for sale in Mississauga with a pool. Um, those are considered long tail keyword searches where they're, they're specifying something you know, specific that they're looking for with, within their search. Um, what's fun enough, and we actually discovered earlier and we'll see if it actually works um, or not this, this time around. So I'm just gonna do homes for sale in Brampton, just as an example. Um, so of course you have all your Google ads at the top here. Now at last time, so you can see here, uh, sometimes it will show you um, some of the commonly searched phrases in Google. So these are the suggestions, right? So detached homes for sale in Brampton. So that's another long tail keyword search where they're specifying specifically what they're looking for, new houses for sale in, in, in Brampton. Um, so you can get some ideas from just doing searches. Um, nonetheless, and, and kind of looking at the bottom as to Google suggestions as to what others are searching for online. Uh, so today we're going to be focusing on creating pages that are showcasing those listings. So you being able to add those pages to your website. Um, so we're going to start off first this time in the uh, automated system. Uh, so these are for all you folks that have, uh, so for example, the uh, the search sites that essentially automatically set your leads up to receive listings from yourself. Um, so some of you might have an unbranded site. It looks like this without all these extra menu items that I've added. Um, and if you have a branded website that's on the automated system, it's obviously branded in the front end. Um, but the leads are still, your searches still kind of look similar to this and the listings look similar to list and, and nonetheless, all your leads are, are being set up to receive listings on those sites. So that's how you, you essentially identify 
if you have a branded website or um, you're on the automated system versus the legacy. Um, now we are going to jump into the legacy afterwards, of course, uh, to show you how to create those pages as well, because they're, they're, they're very different in nature. Um, so what we're going to do is go into our websites tab. Uh, for the automated sites, you're going to go into your site manager. Um, and of course, your, your branded websites on the legacy are always going to show the URL links down here. Okay? Um, so if you go into your site manager, if you have the automated site, um, you should be able to see here uh, and just select it. If you don't, if you know you have the automated site and you don't see that there, uh, please reach out to support. They'll, there's just a click of a button and they'll give you access to the site manager uh, because you could have, you know, access to the site manager may have become a thing after you came on board with Agent Locator. So once you're in here, what you're going to do is you're going to navigate over to your page builder. This is, of course, where you're going to be able to build out pages. So I'm going to just delete this page. I have to delete the sub pages first. So let me just delete that. And let me go back and then delete it. Perfect. So when you have your page builder, this is where it's going to show you all the pages, the menu items on your website. So you can just by me might be doing that. If I refresh this page, you can see the menu options decrease. Uh, just simply by me deleting those pages. So if we're wanting to create a main menu item, meaning that we want there to be a main menu item right here, similar to like Branch and Homes to Street, Street Match, uh, that sort of thing, we would click the plus sign right here. If we wanted to, maybe we had a page already built um, and we wanted to create a sub page, then we would use the plus sign. So you go to any of your existing pages that you already have, and then there's a plus sign right here, which then essentially will allow you to develop or build out a, a sub page under that, that main menu item. So what we can do is, and we'll kind of just replicate what I did in the earlier um, session, is to create a main menu item uh, that has some pages underneath it, essentially. So we'll go into create your own and then go next. And essentially this would be uh, a content page. So then we just go next. And then we, we, we give that its name, right? So the name is what shows up on the website. The title is what shows up on your tab on Google. So we'll just do, you know, common home searches. Again, we'll just do common home searches. And here again, we're gonna go common home searches. And then we just simply go create. Um, so now once we have this page going, you this is basically a big text box, right? So you can go in here and edit, add some content. Once you even create those pages, you can create images that you may want to hyperlink, right? So if we had that image, let's just pick this one. Uh, for example, let's just pretend it said something differently. We can take this image and essentially link it to to the page that we wanted to, right? So if this was, you know, Brampton Homes with Suites, I can link it to that page in my website simply by grabbing the URL um, and inserting it. So now this, this image is a link. Um, so if we went to Brampton Homes with Suites, we could take this, copy it, and then go here and that's the URL. And then let's say I wanted to open into a new tab, go insert, apply and then anyone that was on my website that clicked on this uh, would go into into this page and I'll show you that in just a moment. So before we go ahead and publish this page again going back into our keyword searches and, and what have you it's just making sure you put a couple SEO keywords uh, just identifying keywords that relatively is related to what's going to be found on this page. Um, so it could be homes for sale, you know, homes with pools, homes with apartment, like basement apartments, uh, real estate in Brampton, just keywords like that, that indicate what this page is about. And then a little small description as well. Um, just that little blurb as to what is found on that page. Now, once you've gone ahead and added any of that relative information, you're simply going to click publish. And now this site will be published onto the website. So if we go back here, and I just simply hit refresh, we're gonna see that the common home searches is showing right here. And when I click it, I have this image. And if I was to click that, it's opening up that specific page that I linked it to. 
right? So this one here, we hyperlink that image to open in a new tab, uh, but to showcase this specific page within my website, okay? Um, so now that we've created essentially that main menu item, what we're going to do is close that out. I'm going to refresh this. Oh, it's already there. So the common home searches. So now we're going to create a search page under this main menu item. Now your search pages don't have to go under a main menu item. You can have it as the main level uh, if you want to. Everyone is different, right? So if you have a site and you focus specifically, maybe your URL is indicating that you only work in Brampton. Uh, so you can do, you know, homes with suites, homes with pools, you know, homes with finished basements, whatever it may be, homes listed under, you know, 500,000. I don't think that exists, but um, you could definitely do that so that they're the main menu items if you care to. Um, so to create that sub page, we're gonna go all the way over here and click that plus sign. And to create a long tail keyword search page, it's a listings page, right? We wanna be able to showcase listings. So we're going to select that one there. And then we will go and select listings again and then go next. So for this long tail keyword search, we can really do anything uh, that we want to. Uh, so let's just do something like, uh, you know, detached homes in, um, let's just go Brampton with pools. That's a really long, really long <laughs> name, but that's essentially uh, what someone could be looking for. They might just go homes for sale in Brampton, um, you know, with pools, things like that. So you're still indicating what it is that, that the page is going to present to the audience. So we're going to create that. Now, once we've got this page developed, uh, you have ability to add content, which is which is recommended. Um, so up here, you do have the edit option where you can add that content there. And as you can see on, on this site here, I did add content. So I, you know, made this a little bit bold. I, you know, put some information in there. Um, I said to see the full list of available properties and rental statistics below. So here's all the properties. And then if we even scroll down, I went somewhere online. I can't recall when, because I built this out a while back. Um, but I included some rental statistics of what, you know, detached homes or apartments were, were renting for based on years. Um, now you could definitely hyper, hyperlink this, right? So I didn't hyperlink it, but if you got that information from your local board um, about that information, you can definitely link the key, you know, the words rental statistics to, you know, the, your board that's showcasing the, those statistics as well as showcasing some of that image, you know, information below there. Um, so always having that content and on there just to add the value, but Google's also scraping these sites looking for that information. Um, so yeah, so um, uh, I, I'm going to butcher your name, Ayaz, um, that he's asking or she's asking, do the branded websites have these features? Yes, so you will be able to, and we are going to go over that in, you know, next. So we are focusing on the automated, which are these unbranded, but some people do have um, um, branded websites on these as well. Okay, so some of you have just unbranded ones to specifically for lead gen. And some of you do definitely have your branded websites built on here as well. So we will go um, and run through the legacy system after which is most of you have or many of you will have your branded websites on. Um, and thank you for cleaning, clearing that up for me. Um, so on here again, you can add and edit content onto the website. And then if we go down below here, we do have the ability to set the listing criteria. So that's what you want to be selecting. So here, if we go and select the listing criteria, we're just going to go up to the top. So you can see everything kind of changed. Nothing's grayed out anymore. And we're just going to start setting our criteria. So in this case, it was Brampton, right? So we're going to select Brampton as a, as a city. So now we've got the city. And we also selected that they were going to be detached homes, I believe. Um, so Brampton detached homes with pools. So we're going to go in here and just go houses. And we're just going to make sure that it's only the detached that are showcasing in this list. And then we are going to go more and then scroll all the way down to find the pool option. Um, and there it is. So because we didn't specify in ground, outdoor, indoor, lap pool, we're just gonna select all the pools because all these houses will essentially have a pool and then go apply. 
So you do have an array of different options that you can use to really be specific. And all of you may work in different areas where there's different features uh, that you know, people are looking for. So if you're in cottage country, they may be looking for waterfront property, um, you know, homes with acreage, whatever it may be, the common searches that people will be looking for, depending on where you focus your work ethic. Um, so here we now have all this subtype criteria, and then all you need to do is click done. So once you do that, we're now looking at all the listings in Brampton that essentially have a pool that are detached homes. Now this one looks a little bit close. I almost think it's a link, but hey, a lot of those detached are, are links are listed as detached. Um, but essentially we now have a list. So anyone coming to this page is only gonna be seeing these listings because we filtered it that way. Now, of course, again, you can add your content above, you can add your content below. You also have the ability to adjust settings on here. So if you wanted it to actually be a map, to showcase you know, on a map uh, where those properties are rather than just a list of homes, you definitely can. Uh, you can also itemize how many are gonna show on the page um, and you, know, you can show the listings count, all this stuff. You can play around with it if you care to. Um, any changes, just make sure you hit apply uh, to showcase it. And so because I chose the map, uh, it is going to have that map option there on the right hand side. And then again, going up to your gear and just making sure you're adding those keywords again, right? So I'm specify, specifying a lot of these keywords here that are already used in your filters, um, but putting them together, you know, Brampton home pool with pools, uh, real estate listings, Brampton with pools, uh, keywords like that. And then of course that, that description that's really showcasing to those the individual what's on the page. Now, again, we just hit publish to publish this page. You could, of course, save it as a draft if you're not ready to, if you're still adding or trying to gather content for it. But if we go back over here and we now refresh it, so it's all a little messy because there's too much stuff on here, but now we can see there's a sub page under that common home searches. And if we click on it, we're gonna be able to see those listings. So we now see the listings on a map uh, where they're actually located, as well as all those listings there that do fall under that specific criteria. So it's pretty straightforward when you're adding these pages on the automated site. Um, it's, it's not too complicated, but you put a little bit of thought into it, that's for sure. Um, so common searches, people will look for price points, of course, uh, bedrooms, uh, basements is another one. People want to have, you know, homes where they can have someone potentially uh, help with their mortgage payments. Um, or they have family that they, they want to help uh, move in there. Um, so, you know, be creative with that. And we can also help you uh, if you wanted to instead, you can have this page as a hidden page, right? So if I just wanted this one here, let's say the common home searches, and if somebody goes there and I just want to like, you know, images of, you know, homes with suites, homes with pools, whatever it is, um, you could do that and then you would hide these sub menu options because people would click on these to find it, if that makes sense. Um, so if now, if I wanted to take this page, this common home search page and edit it to add the new page as well, we would just go in here, edit that page, and then add another image essentially is, is all we would do. So we would just take another image. Let's just pretend it's this one, go done. It looks kind of the same size, could be a little bit different. And then we, of course, we would hyperlink that one. So we would go into the Brampton Homes with Pools, grab this one here, go into your editor, click, link, URL, new tab, insert, apply. All right, so now we've got two different images. Uh, we would update the website in this case because we've now made a change to this page. So we wanna make sure we update it. And then if we go back and we go to the common home searches, we now have two options. And if we really wanted to go back, we can go back to the um, over here and then we can actually hide this page, right? So we can go into the settings and if you wanted to, you can essentially hide the page and then update that. And if we go back here, and even just refresh, you can see that there's no more little drop down under there, but I still have access to that page if I click this option, it's right there. 
right? So that's basically it for the automated sites. Um, don't get caught up if you guys try this and something doesn't go right, we can always fix it for you, okay? Um, but I find that learning the tools that are really gonna help your business, um, it's, it's a great thing to learn because you may wanna do things on the fly or just you know start showcasing uh, or targeting something different. Um, and in, instead of having to wait on somebody else, you have, and you can always take the initiative to do it and uh, can do it relatively quickly. So that's the automated system. Does anyone have any questions with respect to how, you know, any of the steps uh, with the automated system? Uh, so Raman, you don't have access to edit your automated site. So let me just make sure that you actually have the automated site. Um, it could be also that you're on a different version of the automated site. Um, and so Robin, Raman, no, clicked the wrong one. Okay, there you are. Um, you are on V2. You do have access to the site manager. Yeah, so you should be able to see that because you're on V2. So again, if you go over to, to website and go to site manager, you should be able to see your website there that you can click on it. So Cynthia, we are gonna go over the legacy sites now. So I just wanted to make sure that uh, we didn't have any questions surrounding this automated site before we move on to the legacy or the, the more commonly uh, branded websites. Perfecto. All right. Uh, so Pal Dalla, I don't know, but let me just see. So Pal, you are on, no, so you're on our legacy site. Perfect. So we're gonna go over that now. So we'll go over the, the legacy sites because a lot of our, our clients that have branded sites um, are on the automated system. Uh, so Angela, you are just getting set up. Uh, if you came in with lead gen, probably, uh, but let me just check. Yeah, you will, have, you will have both actually. So you have the automated as well as the legacy. So your premium is on our legacy and the automated is on the automated essentially. So now in order to access your branded website or your legacy site, because it doesn't have to be branded with your information. We definitely have some people on this that you know want a full website, but it's all about the real estate, not necessarily about them. Um, so we go in and you would click on that website URL. Uh, what it'll do is it's gonna open up the first portion of your website editor in your legacy CRM system. Um, now, what I um, just point out quickly, if you, some of our clients do have more than one branded website with us, uh, they might have community pages. So if you wanted to change a different site other than the one uh, that you just clicked on, you can just go here and navigate between the different sites. Um, so now, once we're on this page, we would go in and use the website editor. Um, so I personally like to have both open, that way I can jump back and forth uh, because you will need to. Um, you will also know you're in the website editor because you have these black boxes on the right-hand side. Okay, so that's an indication that, that you're in the editor uh, is just those black boxes. Now I am going to, so I created earlier the common home searches. Okay, so that's essentially what I did. Um, so I'll do something very similar, so, so similar to what we just did in the other one. So what you're going to want to do is navigate back over here to do that. Okay, so we do have all these pages. I'm going to move some of these and move them under other pages just because um, there's, there's too many, <laughs> too many pages on the menu. So I'm just going to move some of them. Uh, let's just move this one under. Another one. And uh, move this one. And then I'll explain kind of what I'm doing. So when you have a site that has no parent, that means that it's, just, it's the main menu item. It's not parenting any other pages. Um, if you put it under another page, like other, that means it's now gonna be a sub menu item under that page. Okay, so if I save this and even go back here, do I have the other page on here? Yeah, so it's hidden, but if I refresh it, 
you're going to see that I've added all these other pages under there. Okay, so I've kind of took and taken them off the main menu here and put them under the sub as a sub page under there. So to create your page, you're first going to want to put it under a page because you can't, for whatever reason, I don't know why, um, but you can't create just a parent page. You have to kind of put it under a page and then move it from that page. So I'm just going to use home and then I'm going to go go not settings I'm going to add a sub page under here so adding a sub page and so this is going to be the common search you know common home searches so we'll just name this so common home search I'll just put a two just because it's different um and then common home search two come on two uh so for community pages you will want your main parent page because uh, it's not going to be showcasing listings is a community main okay so we want this as a community main page when we're creating it now when we hit save it's now there so if i go home here i'm able to see that i have the sub pages underneath here so now to edit this page and take it out from underneath home so if i go here right now it's well the home page is hidden Oh no, it's right here. There's the home search too. It's right underneath the home menu. Uh, so now I'm going to go into settings and I want to take it out from the parent category of home. So I'm going to move it to no parent. Now um, we have this here so we can see that it's just the common home search too. If you had something before, maybe it said buyers forward slash common home search too, you can eliminate the buyers and just have the forward slash common home search too. And then all you're doing, and you can create your meta tags and descriptions, so your keywords and your description, and then go save. So now once we go over here, we can see that their common home searches is now a main category of this. So now if we want to create this menu items under the home search too, we're going to go back and we are going to add a sub page under here okay so we're going to add that sub page and let's call this one um what it, what it, you know let's just do uh uh let's just do two bedroom condos uh in mississauga let's just say I'm going to copy that and throw it in there. So any pages that you want in your branded website here to showcase listings, you will create those pages as a community page. So community pages are developed for you to set criteria to, to showcase listings. So on all your websites, your branded websites, we often created a bunch of communities for you or you know cities that you may focus your effort, efforts on. Uh, those are all the theme community pages because they're showcasing listings. Um, so once you create that, you would just go save. Okay, so now this page is there. And if we refresh this, it's now going to be in the drop down. So if we click on this page, this is where we're going to be adding the listing. So we have to be in the editor when doing this, because um, you see this option right here, where it's saying, saying to select the listings. Uh, if we didn't select the listings, it would be showing all the listings, <laughs> basically. Um, so now we're going to go and select the listings. And we are going to start first with the city. With the cities, what I like to do is start typing the words and then just go show options. That way you're, it's a complete match to the system. So you're getting a, a, a valid you know, response as far as the listings there. So we've got 922 active listings right now in Mississauga. Uh, we're then going to um, put in the bedroom, right? So we're going to select. If you need to multi-select in here, you are going to hold control down and that allows you to multi-select. And then you add that filter. So now the bedrooms is two. Um, and then if you want to add the type of home, so this is where you would add the condo, right? So we can have the comment, you know, and this is, I'm going to hold control on this one. Uh, we don't usually normally see these listings, um, but I'll select them just in case and then go add filter. 
So now we can see there in Mississauga, there's 179 condos with two bedrooms listed on the market right now. Um, so we can preview, of course, if you wanted to specify price, you can definitely do that. Preview is gonna show you those listings that match that criteria just so that you can see. And then you can, of course, just save it. So once you've saved it, the page is automatically gonna refresh. And now we've got those 179 listings on this page. You do here also have the ability to add that content. So you just turn on your content editor and you'll have that content box pop up. It does display differently, but you can still include hyperlinks. You can still add images. So if we wanted to add an image, you browse the server. You can upload an image or you can use, you know, any of our images really. Um, so I'll just show you just to select one so you can see, and I'm just gonna go, okay. I can hyperlink this image still. So I can take this image and let me, okay, let me save that first. That's a, I was gonna actually show you guys that, but I'm going to open this here so that I can pull the other page that I created as an option. So I just wanted to copy that. So now if I wanna take this image and link it, you're just going to hyperlink it that way put that URL in here. Uh, your target, I always suggest new window and then go okay. So now this image is hyperlinked. Now again, one of the most infuriating things with this editor um, is when you're using the content editor, sometimes for the first time or sometimes it's been a while and you add a ton of content and then you go and you leave the page. Let's say I went back over here and it didn't prompt me. I just quickly clicked on it. All that content would get lost, okay? Um, if you have content in here or you're adding a lot of information, take the time periodically and just click anywhere outside the text box to prompt the save option. Then you know all of that is saved. Um, but once I turn this content editor off, the image is there. And if I click on it, it's linking into that page that I just created right here. Um, so that is essentially how you would go about doing that, um, creating the pages. And you do have the text box at the top and the bottom, just like you do on the other platform. Um, and you can even create pages that showcase it. So now, what you're going to do, so similar to, so I'm gonna show you on this one, so the common home searches, you can add these little icons, kind of like what you have on the home page. So if you go to the home page, you will be able to see like all of these, right? So this is typically maybe differently how they're presented depending on which website package you came with, um, but there are the buttons basically that showcase the listings on there. So you can essentially do that on your home search page. Right, so you can still add the content on there if you wish to, um, but what you're going to want to do, and I should go back because I'm going to copy that. So if you scroll, you'll see all the, the widgets, okay? So the widget you want for that is going to be the featured categories widget, this one right here. Um, if you take that one there and then just go back, we'll just go back to this page here, I should to turn that off and then just paste it in here, okay? Um, click outside the box and save. If you don't see this widget on the homepage of your site, it's likely going to be on your community page. So if I go to the communities page, you're gonna see it there to copy it, okay? So just as a little a side note there for, for some of you, because depending on the site and the, the front end might be a little bit different. So now that we've got it, we're on this page here and we've got the categories, we're actually gonna turn on the widget. Okay, so we're gonna turn on the widget here. <clears throat> and so now you can see that I've got all those other categories on here, but I don't want those categories on here, right? That's not what I'm showcasing on this page. Um, so what I wanna do is edit this widget. So we're gonna click on the settings for it and you're gonna change it to adjust for this page. So a global widget means that any changes, if I was using this widget on 10 of my pages and, and I wanted it to show the same information on all 10 of those pages, that will be a global widget. Meaning if I changed it on this page, it's automatically gonna change on all the other pages. 
Um, now, because it's we only we want this one to be different than the other ones, uh, we're going to make these changes just for this page. And then I always su suggest saving and refreshing. Um, you'll see that everything disappeared. And we're going to go back in. So feature categories. And then what you're going to do is select your feature categories, the ones that you wish to showcase. So you basically go and find those pages. So let's just say we chose this one here and we want to add that one. Um, you also can go in and add the other one, two bedrooms, and add that one. Now this one has a picture because it's already on the other page. Um, so it's pulling that same picture. Um, here we would select our picture. So we need to change that image. And then just remember that it's typically your featured community sizing. So 440 by 240. So if you had your own images you wanted to use, um, just make sure you adjust the pixels to be that um, before you upload it into your images. Uh, but I will uh, just select this one as an example. Now, if I wanted to change the sort order, uh, that's where you're, you're doing it right now. So the sort order is either left or right or up and down. So zero is furthest left or zero is the top of the list. Okay, so if I wanted this one to be in the number one spot, like on the furthest left, I'm gonna leave it at zero and would actually position this to the number one spot. And I'm gonna go yes, and then now it's resorted it. So now this is zero and this is one. Once you're done adding any pages that you may have created, you just go close and refresh, okay? So if we go back in here, we can now see that there's these two condo building or these two um, listing pages that we created. Now, of course, this isn't featured neighborhoods, right? So we definitely want it to say something different. Um, so this is where you can go back into the settings and you can change it, right? So we can change it, you know, common home searches as an example. If you wanna get all creative and adjust the colors here, you're gonna do that right down here. Um, if it allows me to expand it so it's not so hard to read. Um, so this is where you would, would add that in. So these here is your color codes. So you can even just go on Google and just do HTML color codes. And then I just select the first one that comes up. Um, this allows you to pick different colors. Right, so maybe you just want like a dark black or just black because it's darker, um, or maybe you want something that's a little bit vibrant. This right here is what you're grabbing. That that ID, identify, I guess the identifier, the hex number of that color. So then when we go in here, we would literally just replace this FFF with that number, and then you would go save and refresh. That can't. Apparently I clicked the wrong thing to update. So that's not the one that you would update. Um, which one was that? That's, uh, that was, this is the one that was F, 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 F. It's the 999 that you guys will edit. My apologies. I obviously wasn't reading that. So we'll just do that and then go save and refresh. And now it's kind of changed. Uh, so here we have the common home searches is now a nice little purpley blue color. Um, if you guys, this it can definitely be overwhelming for a lot of people. Like, I don't want anything to do with this. I am definitely going to mess this up. Um, support can help you. Just tell them what you want um, and they would take it. Or if you just want something a little bit like darker, like black instead of like gray, that's easy enough in, in here to, to grab the black color. Um, it's just zeros. And then you just change all anywhere where you see the numbers basically to, other than the background one, uh, to zeros. And then it'll change it for you. But if you're if it's too much, just again, reach out to support. They will help you if you want to tweak it a bit. Uh, but that's ultimately how you would add the common, you know, the search pages to these websites. So whether you even wanted to add more communities to your website, that's exactly how you would do it is, is through that method is, is creating a sub page under community, naming this community, adding the, the search criteria and so on, um, doing it that way. Uh, let me just ask questions. So, Pal, yes, this is going to be uh, recorded. It's recorded. It'll be on YouTube afterwards. Um, how can we display our own new or sold listings on the main page? All right, it's a great question. Um, so you should, you should, most of you have what we call is the featured listings. 
Uh, the featured listings, as long as we have your agent ID for whatever board you are, whether it's Red, Red, whatever you're using, D, Korea, whatever it is that you're using, um, typically what happens is your listings will always show first. And then your broker's listings fill up the rest of the spot. Now you can specify these listings. So if you wanted to specify, um, it is a widget. So you can specify if you only want certain cities. So if your brokerage is all over the map and you've got listings from you know one end of town to a completely other city on the other cross town that you have no interest in working in or showcasing listings for, you can list the cities that you want to showcase at your brokerage listings. Uh, you can of course change the title of that. You can also limit to, you know, do you only want everything that's there or do you wanna specify which listings actually showcase on the front page? Um, if you only want listings that are for sale, showcasing, so you can do for sale or lease or both. Um, and then the newest first is basically if you're sorting the listings, um, you have the feature listings is four, um, you can definitely change this. So if I want that to be eight, you know, so all different little settings that you can play around with and then you can save and, and continue that. So now you can see I've got eight listings showcased on here um, because I modified that specifically. Now for the sold listings, what you're actually going to do is, it's a totally other widget, right? So I will put it in the Zoom recording email, uh, but it's the, the widgets essentially. So I think I might've sent in the last one, but a lot of you are, some of you are new, so you may not have had it. Um, so it's the widgets. So it's the list of all widgets if you go into our Zendesk. And in here, you will, you should be able to. So you have the widget, my sold listings. Okay, so that's where you would copy that widget and then go onto your homepage and then you're gonna edit it. Now, because there's gonna be some linking and all that fun jazz in there, um, you can just put it right here. Just make sure you hit control shift B. That takes off any linking, anything. It's just like a, a basic cut and paste. Um, if I had copied it as is, you're gonna see it's like, it's it does that, um, so we don't want that. Um, so control shift B is a standard pace if you don't wanna keep any of the formatting, you just want the text that's you know, included with it. So once we have that in there, we would of course click outside the box to prompt the save, and then you would turn that off. Now, if your ID is connected to the system, which mine is not, uh, the listings would show. So that's the great thing here is if you're using you know widgets and there's nothing to show, it's not giving people a title and nothing there, uh, which can look really bad for some of us depending on what we're trying to showcase. Um, so that way you can you can do it that way. You also have uh, a my featured listing, um, which whatever I don't think it's this one. It could be that one. So let me just see. Uh, featured, exclusive listings, map, filtered map search. I, oh, it's this one, featured listing right here. So the featured listing widget is a great one if you wanna showcase a specific listing. Um, so if we go back in here and throw that in there, no, nope. throw it in there like that, click in there. So that one there, you would actually turn on your widget editor Okay, and you're going to see it down there. So this is where you would, uh, you know, essentially feature a specific listing. Okay, so you can put an MLS number, um, if it's exclusive or pre-construct, you know, whatever, or if it's just automatically changes with your most recent listing, you could do it that way. Um, and then it just automatically flows in there. You can show, um, you know, select a new image. You know, if you want to use a different image and upload it from there you do have that ability to do so, um, but that's really it. And so that would actually get you, and I wish I had the site that I um, had it on, but let me just find a listing to show you. Let me just grab the, uh, the idea of the uh, MLS number for it. So we will do it for specific MLS number, and we're gonna do this. We're gonna throw that in there, and then we're gonna save it. And then we'll turn this off and it should be there. So this is how the My Featured Listing widget shows. So it really allows you to pronounce and, and really showcase that one listing that you might have. Um, if you wanna be specific with that MLS number, 
Now you do have, um, if it's that specific listing and maybe you only have that one listing and that listing sold, it will actually go sold. It'll show sold on there when the property sells. So you don't have to uh, be like, oh shoot, I'm still advertising this as being an active listing. It'll automatically you know, convert to being sold on there for you. Um, so Raman is saying, I build landing pages on MailChimp. Can I use HTML code and build a landing page on my site? Uh, yeah, you can. Um, so all the pages that you have, and let me just navigate to, to just some random page. Um, so like this, all your pages in here, if you go into your edit, have a source code. So this is where you would add your HTML in there. Uh, it may convert properly. Um, just depends. Um, but once you have it in there, you just go, okay, click outside the box, save and turn this off and you'll be able to see if it converted the way you wanted it to. Sometimes you might need to make a couple tweaks um, here and there, um, but generally if it's, if it's a standard HTML code, it should work for you. Um, perfect. Uh, let me just see here. Um, so Mike is asking, who do I talk to about getting more branding on my unbranded lead gen site? Uh, that you could talk to support. Uh, it's just a matter of what you're looking for, really, at the end of the day. Uh, if it's the images. Uh, so again, on these unbranded sites, if I find it here, um, this site here, there's really, like, they're really the only branding you could have is like this right here or throwing in a logo up there. Um, that's really it. Um, the other is if you're like on listings um, or if you had a page like about me, you can add your image and content on there. Um, the others would be like on the actual listing where it's showcasing perhaps your picture and all your information because all the listings will uh, naturally have your information on it. So if you wanted to switch that up a bit, you definitely could um, on there, but it is quite limited, but you could in hindsight in your editor, edit the home page. So you could edit this image on your own if you had it. Um, you can also update the, the logo on there as well if you wanted to. Um, but if you're more comfortable getting support to do it, by all means, I uh, can acknowledge and uh, relate to that. So by all means. Um, so Susan is saying, can you give us an example of SEO keyword descriptions? Uh, yeah, so you, you're, you know, get an, this one could be like, get an up-to-date list or, you know, daily listings of Brampton homes with basement apartments updated daily. Um, you know, it's basically something as simple as that. Uh, where you can get ideas. So if you were to go Brampton homes with suites, let's see. Uh, so these ones here, single family. So these are all descriptions, okay? So these are great ways to be able to find, you know, descriptions on something that you may uh, be able to find, right? So like find the best deals and offers in the house just within last week, right? So just things like that. I wouldn't copy it word for word for him, um, but, you know, it gives you those ideas of what other companies or what other websites are using to be able to showcase those sim similar type uh, pages and listings. Um, let me just go through here. Uh, so Raman is asking if we have a pre-construction database, we can pull info for pre-construction properties. Um, there used to be, I, it's probably outdated. I'll be 100% honest with you. Um, it is something that I know has been in the talk for a long time. It's not something that we currently offer um, as, as part of the site. There's no active you know, widget or what have you, you can add the exclusive listing or the, the pre-construction properties um, to your website, um, but we don't have all the details and information on that. Um, so if you, if you all know of any resources that would make that a lot easier for us to find all, all of that information for you guys or be able to easily pull some of that data, um, then by all means forward it over because we definitely look into it. Um, so Pal is asking if you have access to listings other than Treb, uh, not if you're on the Treb feed. If you're, whatever feed you're on is where you have the access to um, other, other listings, really. 
um, but I can confirm I'm probably the only way that you would have access to other areas is DDF. Um, and the downside for Toronto agents that are using DDF, the downside for you guys specifically is that you'll lose your, your access to sold listings, right? So DDF um, doesn't release the sold data to us. Uh, we don't know if they're ever going to have a feed of that. It's, you know, we, we, it'll be complicated probably for them to develop, but it's, it's hard to say if they all of a sudden offer it, we'll, you know, for sure, we'll be throwing and plugging that in. Um, and so we're right now working on different boards that will give us access to the sold. Um, and as soon as they do, then we, we definitely implement it. Um, some boards have different rules as to there's sometimes there's costs to those feeds. Um, and sometimes they go from a brokerage level, uh, sometimes they go down to an individual level as well. So it really depends. Some of them, there's only a handful of them that, that actually charge the agents um, or a very few, um, but most of our, our clients are able to have the sold. Uh, so Mario has a question. I'll let you talk here if you wanna talk. Or if he was just waving. Maybe Mario was just waving. If you need to talk, Mario, you have to unmute yourself because you're automatically muted. Perfect. So, did you have a question, Mario? We can't. I can't hear you. Either your microphone isn't the right one. Now I can hear you. Oh, no, I can't. <laughs> Did you have a question, Mario? No. Sorry? Okay. Um, but yeah, does anyone else have any, like the, the questions in the group here are a little bit limited right now. Does anyone have any more questions related to your, your websites or anything like that that we can answer? Otherwise, uh, we might head out here a little bit early, or earlier than normal. And we're often heading over time with these things. Awesome. So my, my biggest suggestion to all of you folks is to do your best. Like if you can't figure out how to get these pages on or where you want them on the site, um, start building the pages out the best you can or creating them. And we can definitely assist you or walk you through it. Um, you know, with respect to that. So it's just really creating the sub page as a community page and going into the site and setting the listings. If you need help, uh, which is understandable, creating it so that they're all showcased on the page, as example, um, that can be definitely tricky for many people. Uh, it took me a long time personally. I kept not realizing the difference between Google and this, and like I just totally messed things up. It took me a while. Um, time is money for a lot of you, and you don't have time. Um, to be sitting here, you know, fiddling around trying to get things to work. Um, so it's a great skill to have because then you can jump in and tweak and, and regularly add content to your website and add more, um, you know, more, more things to showcase to those visitors that are coming to the website. Uh, but, but again, we don't want you struggling with it, but do one step at a time, like just start creating one page, whether you showcase it to the public or not, that's entirely up to you. Um, we're all different, right? So our capabilities are all different. If you had a several pages that you wanted our team to create, uh, there would likely be a cost associated with that. I'm just giving a heads up right now. Um, so if all of a sudden you came out, yeah, I want the Commons Home Search. We went through this with Crystal and, you know, here's my 15 pages I want created and da, 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 da. here's some info for those pages. Uh, they will likely charge you for that. I'm just giving you a heads up because uh, it will take some time to build and develop those pages for you. Um, it's not expensive uh, as far as that goes. They really base it on time at the end of the day. So I think it's usually about five, five dollars or maybe ten dollars a page if they're doing that. Um, depends on how many pages you're, you're asking or requesting from them. Um, but does anyone, I don't see any more questions in the group. Um, as mentioned, it is recorded, so it will be up on YouTube tomorrow. You will also receive the email uh, that I'll send to you with Zoom. I will also include these list of widgets uh, that you guys can, uh, you, you know, play around with as well, kind of seeing what they are. There is a description 
below uh, for some of them, I guess, um, with respect to what they actually are in there. So you can kind of uh, get a general idea. So you're not just plugging them into the website and then, you know, hoping for the best. Um, but that, I guess that's it for today's session. Um, but if you guys do have any questions, by all means, feel free to email me anytime. Uh, you can also reach out to support if you guys are, you know, looking to, you know, try to figure this out, but you're kind of getting stuck in some places, we can definitely assist you. Um, but I wanted to thank all of you for joining this evening and, you know, happy, happy websiteing. Um, I hope that you all you know, try to do at least one thing, whether it's just adding content even to your website. And uh, next session, we are going to be talking about Facebook. So it'll be a little bit more focused. Um, some of it will be focused on creating ads, um, so driving traffic to your website. Um, it will also be, for those people, automated. So we'll start with the driving portion first, because a lot of our clients will have, you know, just a branded website. They don't have the automated you know, portion of it. And then we'll go through like the leads campaign. So how you would essentially set up a leads campaign on Facebook uh, to generate traffic or even just running like a boost campaign. So if you have, you showcase, you know, you post something on your Facebook page to bring awareness to your page, you know, you boost the post. It can cost, you can do it like $2 a day for five days. You know, it's not, it's not going to cost you an arm or leg. Uh, but it definitely builds awareness and it gets people liking your post. And then you can essentially invite those people to like your pages. Um, so you can definitely increase your audiences through Facebook and uh, for, you know, not having to spend a lot of money. Um, but I want to thank you all for participating this evening. Um, and as mentioned, just reach out if you need any help, but we will see you all again next Thursday. Uh, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your evening and uh, take care until then.